are contactees, uh, psychics and channelers around the world speaking about this time of change who represent different galactic confederations. What do you think about it? Ah, uh, good <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, that, this is certainly a, re a reality. I will provide two examples and... Uh, the, these two clear exam these two examples will be clear examples of what is going on at this time. Um, I will begin first with a, a very short story about uh, Wendell Stevens, a very well respected researcher during the mid 1990s. And back, uh, I think it was 1995 or 1996, he told me the following. Even back then, he was aware of. 125 different races of people and right at that at that point in time we were only talking about organic 3d uh, ETs 125 different ET races that were watching planet Earth at that time he was involved in at minimum that I knew of uh, 25 26 cases directly of physical contact people from other planets with people of Earth even back then. And, and, and the people of the Andromeda Council have told me that even at this point in time, there are upwards of 500 races observing planet Earth during this time of change. Steve. Yes. So, so, so is it possible that there are uh, many contactees, psychics and channeler, channelers, receiving information from these many races? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And uh, uh, to, to bring closure to this topic, uh, I have also learned that some of these races do not have our best interest in mind, uh, which of course includes the the four different races of reptilians and the people also called the Greys. They are known to have uh, um, automated systems, sometimes called artificial intelligence, right? Which uh, um, do repeated broadcasts. They are these, these computers continue to broadcast the same information over and over and over again. Right? And it is certainly quite possible that um, uh, um, if, if, the, if the psychics and channelers are not paying attention to energy vibration, then they very, very well be picking up automated information which is not in the best interest of earth you understand yeah that's that is the answer on that question okay so what what do you know or what do you think about this group called the galactic federation of light uh, who are they and what about these things they talk about in order for people to change their dna and receive uh, higher dimensional bodies that they have to get into their ascension chambers uh, hmm. uh, <laughs> Yeah, this is this is not a good thing. But I, I thank you for asking the question. But first of all, I will tell you where they are they are known to be located. Based on all of my information from my contacts with the Andromeda Council, they are clearly aware of this group, Galactic Federation of Light. Uh, they are a small federation of planets that is based in the Tau. Sorry, that is based in the Sirius B star system. Now to address the matter of um, the transformation of this planet, the evolution of the human species, right, and, and their, their recommendation that it is important for human beings to use their ascension chambers, nothing can be farther from the truth. Here, no, here, nothing can be farther from the truth, or it's a big lie. That's, yes, that it's totally farther from Yes, that is another way to say this. And the reason is because right. the, the transformation of this planet is a natural event. And, and people of planet Earth are part of the natural life force of this planet. And for the people who desire to become fourth dimensional people, there, are no, there is no need for an, what they call an ascension chamber. Not necessary. Yeah. And, and I would warn people, you know, of course, everyone has the right to make a decision, whatever choice is good for them. But I, I, I strongly warn people to be very, very careful. You may very well risk uh, 
losing yourself in these ascension chambers if they are not what the Galactic Federation of Light says that they are. It would be a, uh, a sad experience indeed if you were to lose yourself in this ascension chamber when all you really have to do is wait until January 2014. Very sad. There, and there are some other key differences. As an example, uh, for many years they were the Galactic Confederation of Light. Now they also try to call themselves Galactic Federation. And this does not make sense because the original Galactic Federation is part of the Andromeda Council. Moreover, the original Galactic Federation is based in the Tau Ceti star system. Right. There are uh, 140 star systems and at present 300 planets. What the Galactic Federation does as part of the Andromeda Council. Think, think of the Galactic Federation as a, uh, a, a large-scale day-to-day management organization. It assists on a day-to-day -day basis with the, the cooperative protocols for intergalactic, interstellar, and interplanetary services. And I'll describe some of the few. Think of uh, open trade or open exchange of products and services. Yeah, exchange of resources and uh, inter-society, intercultural, uh, multiple exchange of university programs, many, many activities on a planet-to-planet -planet basis. Again, um, they help to manage all of these activities. Uh, in conclusion, the Andromeda Council uh, is a high-level governance body. Now, one of the things that I want to get into, the Galactic Federation of Planets, who make up the Federation? The Federation is made up of over 500 worlds from at least 100 different systems, all in this galaxy. They're all Milky Way based, and they are groups of positives and some neutrals. And by positive, I mean that these are, these are people who are generators of energy and whose social uh, practices tend to be communalist, not communist, communalist, tend to be peaceful, and tend to be very, very uh, friendly and giving. And they also are the primary governing body for the positive planets of this galaxy. Okay, and how is it different from the Federation of Light? The Federation of Light makes up a handful of systems at most. Most of these are reptoid and gray systems, and the people of them have been genetically engineered so that they appear human. And it is not so much a federation as it is more of um, a empire. And they are actually uh, conquistador. They go out and try to expand their empire often through hostile methods, and one of those methods is by priming human civilizations for contact and invasion via uh, specially selected individuals who fit an ideal of physical appearance that uh, humans are often comfortable with. Well, let me ask you a question about the Dracos and, and the Greys. Off the top of your head, do you know how many planets or, or other worlds they've tried to conquer? Because they've been at this a long time. They have been at this a long time, and I don't have the number. All I know is that our um, list of planets that need freeing after Earth has gone from 21 to over 50. And what, tell the people, what effect have they had on us down here on Earth? They first got involved around 6,000 years ago on Earth, and at first their presence was very, very covert, and then after the fall of Atlantis, they got to be a lot more overt, because the, um, the ones who were supposed to be watching over us uh, left their post, and that allowed the lizards in. And one of the things they've done is they've influenced us genetically. They dropped our lifespan from 1,000 to 1,500 years to 50 to 100 years. They introduced diseases. They introduced poisonous um, animals and plants. They introduced salt into the water system 
in order to uh, make it so that the water system was controlled in order to better control our population. They uh, made it so that we were capable of involuntary pregnancy, which again was an effort to control the breeding population. Uh, they have introduced a lot of different social systems, including uh, certain methods of trading and buying and commerce. And they've also influenced certain bloodlines on this planet. So pretty much they've created the mess that we are today. Yes. But there yes. are and hidden that's bloodlines, thing. right? If you listen to the messages of the Galactic Federation of Light, they're always telling us about how we messed up. We made a mess of the planet. We're terrible people. That's not the case at all. It was never us. Humans on Earth are seen by positives as the same as an abused child. If an abused child acts out, it is not because that child is bad. It is because the abuse has been bad enough that that child acts out. The problems on this planet were never done fully by us. We might have been the tool, but it was another hand that was wielding it. 